Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Namaste Center. It's uh, a beautiful day today, as always, and always a delight to see these wonderful, smiling, happy faces and just feel all the love that uh, is here each and every week. I am blessed, and I'm just so grateful for everything. And I was thinking of something to talk about, and as synchronicity would have it, which I just love it because I talked about being in flow last week, and you know, when we really surrender and let go and let spirit and uh, release emotions that don't serve us, uh, release judgment, um, attachment, fear, all of these things opens us up to great flow in our life and God's will. And, and when, I'm, when I'm allowing myself to let go of the past and be fully present and place my life in God's hands, all is well. So some neat little synchronicity is uh, because I do the radio show on Saturday mornings, I go in and tape um, sometimes a couple of weeks ahead of time. So a lot of times, if you all do listen to the radio show, you'll see that I have the same topic that I'll be talking about. You'll be like, well, I heard that yesterday. But I hope, I really do try my best to enhance the talk as much as I can. But uh, the talk uh, that I had written a few weeks ago was uh, I serve God through serving others. And it's all about service and, and what that means and how we can be, play a bigger role in our lives and in the world. Well, wouldn't you know it, um, this past Wednesday, if you weren't here, you, you really missed a great opportunity to, um, to be educated and inspired about human trafficking and slavery. It, it was uh, Bob and Fran German did an amazing job. They do amazing work. Uh, it gave me, uh, I really appreciate and respect them so much already, but it gave me even a deeper appreciation of the service that they bring onto this planet because they're uh, <clears throat> great souls and great servants. <coughs> and actually, uh, they come in and out of here. They're sort of church hoppers. They go around. They just spread their love and light everywhere. But uh, they live part of the year in Thailand. And since they've been over there, they've actually uh, been, uh, they've been working with these uh, slaves. And they, they shared with us um, the statistics and that there's more slaves on our planet today than there ever have been. And it was such an eye-opener. And we hear about human trafficking and, and uh, all of these things that you know, we don't really want to look at. And they, they offered this presentation in a very loving but you know, blatant way at the same time because it was, it's something I think we really, uh, it would help us to be aware of. And a lot of the, what they do is they work one-on-one -on -one with young women and men to help them get reestablished in society. They actually uh, pay, I think, $1,600 a year, and for that, for each person, they're able to provide uh, food and housing and medicine and counseling and get these people a uh, passport. You know, a lot of these children have no... They really, they're not even on record. So they, and the one thing that really, when I broke down, you know, the tears started coming, was, uh, you know, the, some of it was horrific, but when they showed their picture side by side with, uh, you know, the children, this little three-year-old boy who was uh, sold as a sex slave, in, in, um, and he just had such terror in his eyes, and then they have a picture of him today with Bob, I believe, was in the picture, and he is the happiest, handsome young man, and then the other two young girls who were in the same predicament just to see the difference. And I was like, wow, that is amazing. And sometimes I think, you know, we can look at this, because there's millions of, of children and adults who are being sold, you know, in this industry, and it seems like an overwhelming, like, where do you even begin? And of course, we can all say, well, look, at if you're, if you're a dog person, I have to sort of flip the channel real fast. I don't know about you, but when those uh, Humane Society commercials come on, I can't watch them. Uh, and, uh, but there's all kinds of opportunities out there for us to step up and, and serve. And as I said, sometimes it can get overwhelming, like, where do we begin? And one thing that Bob and Fran made very clear is one at a time. You know, adopt a kitten, adopt a dog, 
or adopt one of these children. You know, it, it changes, it, it can, one life, you know, there's everyone in this, in, on our planet, each soul is equally important and valuable. So just by taking the interest in one soul can make a world of difference, truly, because now these individuals are gonna go back into their community and, and be able to serve those uh, who are still in need. So that reminded me of that starfish story and, and it, was, um, it, it was about the fellow who used to walk the beach every morning and you know, the, through the tide, there'd be gazillions of starfish and what he would do, and they'd just be there and, and dying because there was no water. So every morning he'd go pick them up and throw them back out into the ocean. And this little boy was watching him and he said, what are you doing that for? There's all, I mean, what difference does it make? Look at all these starfish. And he picked one up and he threw it. He said, well, it made a difference to that one. And, and I think that's such a powerful message because, you know, there is something that we can all do. And I, I believe, you know, spiritually, you know, we do the work and, and we get it because I talk about it all the time that, you know, we're all one mind, we're all connected. So really, uh, all healing is self-healing. All we have to do is accept the atonement for ourself. And by choosing love over fear, then it's a ripple effect. Everyone is touched by that gesture. We get that. That's, that's something we can all do, staying in prayer. And certainly that's a, a very valuable gift that we can bring into the world. But we may be inspired to take a bigger step, maybe a more proactive step. And I know when I was in Florida, I've mentioned it a few times, that we had a big outreach community. And I was involved with a lot of people with a lot of dire situations. And at, to be honest, after 11 years, I just couldn't, I, I said, I can't do this anymore. It was just, it was tiring, it was, it was exhausting. So I, I took a break from it. And, uh, uh, I just now am open to being a servant, but not sure in what capacity. And I think it's different for each and every one of us. But not to run around, run away from it, but to really go into our hearts and say, how may I be of service? Because again, we look at the world and we say, well, you know, there's no excuse for anyone going hungry, really. There's, there's no excuse. There's not a lack of food on the planet. What there is is a lack of compassion and people willing to come together to use this for the greater service of the world. There's not a lack of resources at all. I really believe that. Um, there's also, uh, you know, uh, uh, good old Facebook, you know, you get all the postings and maybe true statistics. I, I, I would like to think that, that this uh, could be one. And they talk about these fighter jets. And I mean, they, those things are expensive. I mean, they're billions of dollars. I mean, they pay like crazy for one jet. And they say the cost of one jet could literally eradicate hunger, you know, in Africa. I'm just throwing out a random comment here. But the point being is where are, you know, are we putting our attention on war and fear or on peace and healing? So it's, it's our priorities. And again, it's really easy to judge and say, oh, you, bad people for spending all this money. That's not the point I'm trying to make here at all today. It's really just recognizing and, and owning the fact that there is a better way of being in this world and there are things we can do to, to bring more light into it. And so it's, it's enough, uh, you know, as I said, there's, there's plenty of resources. We just need to look inside and say, how can I be of service? Well, you know, it's, um, when we're in oneness and you understand that that little boy or that little girl or that puppy is a part of us. I mean, I, my latest gig this week is there's this little tiny rabbit. It's this big and it's right up the street from our house. And I have been trying to catch that thing for three days because it's, it's pitiful. It sits right outside the woods and it just looks. And I know that it's probably lost its mom and uh, probably by that snake that was uh, on our porch. And, uh, but anyway, it's, um, you know, that, that little rabbit. So I couldn't catch it. I went up yesterday and uh, got home and said, Ellen said, it's still up there. So I walked up and it was gone. But I, I just said, well, I can't find it. I can't save it physically, but I sent love to the little bunny. 
And, you know, it's, I think when we open our hearts, we have so much more compassion for all beings. And sending love, if that's what we can do, that can help because that opens them up to that awareness and that feeling and appreciation as well. And when we understand this oneness, you know, this whole idea of giving and receiving are one in truth because you're me and I am you. I mean, we're not separate from each other. So if I'm willing to see uh, my brother as myself, it's if I'm giving to you, that's a gift to myself. So it's the old paradigm and belief is, well, I'd like to write a check or I'd like to, to give my time, but I've got all this going on myself. I can't do this and I, you know, I've only got this much money and I can't really do it, I'd like to. But really, all giving is, is circular and it's a gift to ourself. And when we really get the idea of oneness, it becomes a natural extension of who we are to wanna to give. And to serve means to be in service of others and render faithfulness to God. Each person who serves becomes an instrument through which the goodness of God flows into the world. And, and it's so true. That is really, you know, how we're all in this uh, experience, in this life, to really learn how to be of service to each other and, and to really tap into that idea of oneness and that we can truly make a change like that starfish. Well, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, when you see people and they're really down in their story and the dumps and, you know, life just is not working and it's, my life is, ain't it awful? You know, oftentimes when that person is willing, including myself, to get out of my story and just ask, how may I be of service? If I can get out of that and get into a, a service mentality and then get, uh, you know, get to work in that direction, I feel better because I'm not so much looking at my stuff. So it really is important for us to under, understand that cycle and that we can get out of this. So as Gandhi says, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And of course, I grew up uh, in this, um, not-for-profit uh, experience, uh, as I said, through service in Florida. And again, a great synchronicity moment was meeting a woman, um, Ma Jaya, who was such a, uh, so uh, words can't describe this woman. Uh, she was a Brooklyn, a Jewish girl born in Brooklyn. Uh, she was raised in an impoverished family under, uh, she lived under the boardwalk with the homeless people. And she was, she was a street savvy girl and then she had this whole spiritual experience and became a, a guru and, uh, and has a, she passed away last two years ago, but has an interfaith community in um, Sebastian, Florida called Kashi Ashram, which is this woman really got it into my head that there is no such thing as a throwaway person. And her whole life was about service. Her whole community, talk about servants. They went not only locally, they would drive 100 miles into Palm Beach every week, serve those people, and then they would go to Africa. She had orphanages. She was amazing. And, uh, and another synchronicity event is when we used to take people from our center up to her ashram, which was always a blast. Um, she was uh, telling her story when she was a kid about living under the boardwalk. And she was talking about, you know, she had no money for food, her family had no money, and she, there used to be a butcher on Hubbard Street, I'll never forget this. And this man uh, was a Jewish butcher, and he was, she said he was the kindest man, and every day I'd walk in there and he'd, give, he'd put under a little broiler the best cuts of meat he had and gave them to her. And as she's telling this story, just so happens, one of the women who was from our center that went up with us said that was my father. I mean, uh, again, I mean, it was, it was remarkable. It was, it, and she said, oh my God. So it, it's, you know, it, 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 all these cool things that happen, all these God events, you know, it's, it's amazing. And of course, that, that's all it took for Arlene to, to pop in and get involved. Uh, more with Ma and her work as well. So it, it's, I was very blessed and grateful because that opened my eyes to being um, of greater service to the world. And I, Albert Einstein, you may have heard this quote, he says, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, 
but by those who watch them without doing anything. And it's, I, I think that's, there's a lot to be said for that. You know, we, we see this and, uh, you know, you see the injustice, you see the starving, you see the suffering in the world. Now, I think as spiritual beings, uh, the be greatest gift we can offer is love, prayer, and, and not join in with the suffering. In other words, detached compassion. So I'm acting from compassion, but I'm not joining in the fear. But as of course the miracle said, we talked about the miracle principles a few weeks ago. Uh, you know, when we're miracle minded, those of us who temporarily have more give to those who temporarily have less. So it, it's that circular uh, motion again, circle of life. So if I temporarily have more food in my garden, for example, I wish I had a garden, but uh, if you have a garden, maybe how can I use my extra food to be of, of service? If I've got uh, financial means, how can I use my means uh, as a means of bringing more light and love to the world? If I'm a retired teacher, how could I go and offer maybe my uh, services if, uh, at an after school program? There's always something we can do with our gifts. We just have to be willing to open our hearts and look and, and see and ask. So we need to be of service, whether we make ourselves available to a friend or coworker, uh, or make time every month to do volunteer work. There's nothing that harvests more a feeling of empowerment than being of service to someone in need. And I, I find that so true. You just feel so good. Uh, I know that, um, we used to, one of the, my favorite things to do in Florida, it was so much fun. We had a really rough inner city right down in West Palm Beach. And I could drive through there. Pete, now this is like, uh, this is not a safe place, let's put it that way. And there, you're always reading about shootings and drugs. And I would drive down every Saturday with a group of volunteers and the kids would come running out to the car waving and the parents were very loving and respectful and I never felt fear because I wasn't, I was in there, we had such a love bubble going in there, it was wonderful. And what we would do is pack up pickup trucks, our members of our community would just bring food and they would bring uh, clothing and whatever they no longer needed and chose to recycle toys. And, and it was beautiful to see the smiles on these kids' faces just come running out. And again, I, I never, uh, people couldn't believe I used to drive down in these streets. Uh, and I, I just never gave it a thought because I knew I was protected. Now we need to uh, make sure too that we serve with a joyful heart because a lot of times um, if we serve uh, without joy, it doesn't help the servant or the served because um, if, if I'm, if I'm doing, okay, I gotta do this, if that's, that's what's being expressed. So it's really about coming to life in everything we do with a joyful heart. You know, it's really the love that inspires everything that makes it magical. If there's no love behind it, it may not be your time or your mission to, to do that. So it's, um, you know, it's really about asking ourselves, are, am I willing to be of service? And if I am, Ask spirit, how can I be of service? There's lots of ways to do it. Uh, as I said, share our skills, share our finances, share our produce, whatever it is. But there's things we can do and spirit will make it an easy process. It's not like we have to, to just uh, throw ourselves out there and suffer. It's really a joyful experience. Um, one thing we can do, I know that uh, if we're in a workplace, Bring, bring a joyful heart to work. You know, bring that compassion to your employees and those who you serve. I find that um, yeah, one thing my father always told us growing up, because I worked fast food and did all that stuff, and he always said, when you're working somewhere, act as if you own the place, and, and not to treat it as if you own the place. And, and so you need to take pride in what you do. It's not like, well, I'm just doing this because I have to do this because I need a few dollars. But, you know, it, it was interesting because even when I was working at Burger King, you know, I, I, was, I was considered a very valuable employee. And only because I showed up with a smile on my face, I was uh, kind to people. And I think that that means so much. If you want to build a business, your business is your service. So we want to, uh, we have a great landscaper, for example, 
uh, he's, and he's expensive. People always say, I don't use him because he's expensive. But on the other hand, he is so uh, service oriented. And I said, it's worth it to me to, to pay that little bit of extra because he's always there. He'll call us when we're out of town and say, this tree is this or that, or would you like me to plow your driveway? And that just, for me, that's, that's worth it right there because when you have people who are in that joyful place of service, whatever they do, so take that into your, into your work, whatever your work may be. Wouldn't it be nice to, go and uh, be greeted in a restaurant, and, or won't, wouldn't it be? It is nice when we go to a restaurant and the servers are, are kind and attentive to you. Those are all things we can do to bring more love and compassion to the world. Now, going back to scripture, in Matthew, Jesus says, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And that can go both ways. So am I, because there is no least of my brothers. So if I'm kind to a brother, I'm kind to God. If I'm unloving to a brother, that reflects the same kind as well. Because it's up to us to be really understanding. And we all are here. We're spiritual beings having a human experience, but it's up to us to, to step into a bigger role, play a larger role on this planet. Now, Henry Ford, um, you know, he, he was a, what a, he was a light. I mean, here's a man who really created uh, an industry. Of course, you know, uh, the automobile, the assembly line, he really was the creator of that. But he also was, wanted every, I loved what he said, he wanted every one of his employees to be able to afford to buy his car. Because, you know, there's so many people now, that's another uh, issue at hand, is the minimum wage. Most people with minimum wage can't even afford to have an apartment. And so it's, but at that time, this was uh, almost 100 years ago, or 100 years ago, where he wanted to make sure that his employees were taken care of and could buy it, uh, buy a Ford if they wanted it. And he, he went on to say, a business ab absolutely devoted to service will have only one worry about profits and that they will be embarrassingly large. And so I thought that was such a great thing. And so, you know, there is a way, somewhere we've lost that path, that, that service mentality and that, you know, share the profits. And it's not socialism, it's just, it's living in harmony and oneness and compassion and love. And so, the, needless to say, we don't need to tell you how big this Ford industry became and that all of his employees were paid well. They could drive a Ford if they chose to. And he revolutionized uh, the car automobile industry. So it is possible, but we need to be willing to step out of that old paradigm of that new old paradigm of thinking that that's just not working these days. And the way we do it is, is one starfish at a time. Now it's, um, I, as you know, I make mention, I use social media a lot and I find value in it. And uh, like all technology, social media is neutral, but it's best, it's best put to work in the service of building a better world. And I think if we understand that, you know, I like the, uh, all the great quotes and stories and successes of people that I read about because then you can rejoice in other people's successes and say, that's awesome, that's great. And, and so that's, that's building more light too. So social media isn't a monster, it really isn't. Some people say, oh, that's terrible, I don't wanna do it. And that's okay, but it might not be your thing. But for me, I look at it as a great ministry. And back to really the whole idea of us being spiritual beings, um, you know, the greatest uh, service that we can render to the world, and this is what Maharishi says, is our own self-realization. And of course, I think at the highest level, that is what we are here to do, to become self-realized, to understand that who I am in truth, and it's not uh, this body, it's not my job, it's not any of that. It's really, I am a light. I'm a being of light. I am love. I am an extension of God's perfection, and so is everybody else. So as we become self-realized, we're holding that space for everyone else to see that in, in themselves. And in closing, uh, I thought this was such a sweet quote, 
and it said, um, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. And so it is, namaste. namaste.